Okay, so in this discussion, um, and for purposes of deciding, you know, you deciding whether, con you know, consult is a good idea. Yeah. Um, the, the question is whether you are finding in play Okay, you said you wanted it to be the game in which there is a fictional investigation mm -hmm. and in which we can properly say that it's not just present, but it is actually what's going on. It's what we're playing, actually, yeah. yes. Yeah, it's what yeah. we're playing. And so there's the, the resolution. Um, actually, I can, can I quote like a sentence that I wrote because it's, it's from your course and then I reinterpreted it. So actually, I, I think you will like it. But the intro, I think, describes exactly what I want to do with this game, um, which is, um, I'll just read it to you. Um, so um, the, um, again, I describe what is a detective story. You don't need that. There are very, there's a lot of ways to make stories like this in a role-playing game. We are trying to propose the dynamic of an investigation as a challenge. Let's start from that moment where you're at, in the middle of the book and you're um, wringing your brain together with a detective. And we start from the situation as an unresolved and unfinished situation. And this is where the game, this is where we draw our game. Even though you're going to uh, use the abilities of your detective, you are going to be the one to solve the case. And differently from the above mentioned stories, it is not certain that you will solve it. Um, none the, uh, and also not sure that the detective are going to come out of it uh, unscathed. Uh, you will be together, author and spectator, of the, the tank detectives' uh, uh, happenings, I guess, and responsible for their fate. This is the kind of description. So the idea is that we take like the Poirot novel, we slice it in half, the second half doesn't exist. We're like, after the murder has been committed, and now it's up to you, right? Write the end, right? Um, kind of the idea. Uh, does that make any sense to you? It makes sense, but something else makes sense to me too. Yeah. And it may mark the moment where I actually give you some consulting advice. Yeah. Stop writing. Okay, yeah, sure. No, Start playing more. Manuscript itself, I mean. Oh, okay. That's a that sure. right now it's it's going to suck you in you're going to worry about phrasing you're going to start organizing the point you're going to start making up audiences in your head that you're trying to convince of something oh you're going yeah. to start explaining yourself you're going to start you know comparing with other games you're going to get all wrapped up in that stuff and right okay. now the focus should be just on hitting the table and right whatever it is you mess with last time you know, mm. that's different now play at this so, time see what happens um, fair enough um i think the audience at the moment is just the other guy that needs to run it um but fair enough um i'll keep it just for me and him yeah whatever i write yeah, yeah the, the idea that the writing has to be it's any writing which is a fine thing to do in a lot of ways but it needs to be super provisional Mm -hmm. And you know as well as I can that as soon as you start imagining an audience that you're trying to convince or to, you know, justify why you're doing it this way, well, anyway, yeah. there's there's nothing. Different. Well, I, I I I don't think I'm doing that a lot. I think it's mostly for myself. But I just said I need to write it down to otherwise I I have this like all the thoughts are confused in my head. Uh, but fair enough. But parts you know, parts of what I wrote, I, I I was starting to go in that direction though. So it's, it's a very very good advice. So I do thank you. So the idea here is that all that writing that you're talking about, it's great. Yeah. But it's not manuscript. Yeah. Right. It's it's just not. Yeah. It's, it's a whole bunch of stuff that you write as part of your process, and that's a great. Yeah. Thing. So um. Yeah. So with that in mind, I think you're in good shape. And I heard what you said a minute ago, and I I'm glad that. That made sense. Um, so if you now, uh, okay, so then, then comes the, the circumstances of uh, just ordinary play. I mean, I mm -hmm. imagine a great deal of this involves playing the non-player characters with some, you know, 
with some excitement, right? Here's all these characters. Yeah, they are not. So all of the suspects, uh, they all have shit that is hidden, and they are all. Most of them are resistant to the investigation. Right. So they are not just oh like a cardboard cutout and you go ask them questions right right they're not they're not push the button and get the clue right and there's other stuff going on other than the murder yeah that detectives might have an opinion on and they might want to intervene on if they want to sure. if they don't then well yeah well I, all this actually makes a lot of sense and one of the most important aspects of it um, is something that I talked a lot about in a recent course that when we're dealing with hidden information, um, and I'm, I'm actually going to borrow from something that, uh, Jesse Bernecco has written a lot about, mm -hmm. um, which is that he found himself stalled in these games historically in a very specific way, which was that it seemed to him as though, I'm paraphrasing a little, and he didn't know why this got him in trouble, but now this is him looking back and realizing why it got him in trouble, was that he was assuming that the culprits were completely successful and secure. So right. So meant that the only thing that could screw it up were the investigators and so therefore he had everybody be so normal and so secure and so thoroughly uh you know insulated that all they had to do was just keep on acting normal and everything would be fine and so he called it the scooby-doo problem you know everything was going great you know except for you meddling kids so yeah in thinking about that, I realized something important, which is that if people are concealing something from the other people, you know, in the situation, investigators or otherwise, um, they're going to have to act funny. Yeah. At some yeah. point, maybe not all the time, but, you know, in the dark of night or at some point, or maybe all the time, just in the way they act or something, yeah. they are going to not be right. And yeah, one of the things that I, one of the constraints that I gave Lorenzo, because he's writing the, the mystery under kind of my um, comment, right? Um, one of the things that I told him is that I don't want any like psychopaths, right? right. Um, like, because psychopaths, don't act funny or like they act right. like it's a completely different thing right no, it's not interesting it, right. it's not okay. interesting we're not playing the hannibal lecter horror that's right. a horror that's not it that's not detective fiction right uh that's 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 uh and Basically, everybody yeah it's like um that's hannibal lecter the silence of the lambs right that's a yeah. um i think that everybody if you read agatha christie novels and i've read almost all of them um uh, yeah, I know I'm I'm a, I'm a terrible person. Uh, <laughs> uh, I um every time there is a like it's all it's not really about the puzzle. It's a puzzle, but then it's always some some sort of personal be, personal behavior that triggered the crime. It's not just some like psychopath. It's not Moriarty, right? Or, this is explicitly. I'm not quoting Sherlock Holmes in the at, at all. I don't want that shit, right? Well, a um, okay. couple of things here. Yeah. First of all, I want to get to the point you're making, and then yes. the trouble is, is that these references, these literary references, are going to walk people off cliffs, and maybe you too. So right. Let's talk about the point that I'm hearing, which is that straightforwardly. With no need for further analysis, we're talking about motivated crimes. Yes, motivated crimes. Yes, and that's and, and then you say that everything else is clear, yeah. goes away. So, yes, thank you. Um, so that's one thing. Now, at the risk of fascinating myself too much, especially with anything you have to say, um. I want to venture into the literary, what I mean is I want to venture into the literary side of it. If you're this 
knowledgeable and skilled at the literature, I'm going to want to get, you know, I'm, I'm going yeah. to get sucked in. So yeah. at that risk, um, I want to clarify a couple of things as, as I yeah. said, so you know where I'm coming from on this. Sure. Um, although they're not totally incompatible, they're usually written separately, and that would be mystery versus detective. Mm -hmm. And maybe this is more of an American distinction with some reference to British, but the the idea here is that in the mystery, the crime is actually of paramount importance. Mm -hmm. And it may be written as a puzzle for the reader. Um, and there are many readers who would prefer that, right? So there's a fair amount of them that are in fact puzzles as you read. Um, you know, can you spot it, you know, before yeah. that sort of thing, but that's not always the case, but it's very common in mysteries. Another yeah. important thing about mysteries is that the crime, the, who did it is of great interest to most people in the, story. yes, they, a lot yeah. of people want to know who did it, you know, in many cases, yeah. it may be the police or it, you know, maybe a whole family, but, or whatever, but a lot of people would really like to know. Yeah. Um, and the um the the effective um the the for lack of a better word the the effective notion that the world is orderly and the and can be set right you know this is a mm -hmm. this is a this is a deviation right this is a this is this is a a uh an unnatural act if you will um, mm -hmm. Now, so to go all the way to the other end of the spectrum and look at the, the raw detective stories, the detective, first of all, the, the crime in question may only be the tip of an iceberg, and the other things that occurred may not ever have been thought of or recognized as crimes um and that we're dealing with an entirely toxic aspect of society mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. a corpse is merely one indicator and it may be very important or it may not be all that important um in the bigger picture but another important part of it is that there are a whole lot of people who would really not who would really prefer for things to be let lie as they are Whatever bogus mm -hmm. story is made up about this particular corpse or, you know, whatever uh, indifference the authorities may have toward it or anything of the kind, there are a lot of people, many of whom are very much uh, socially well-placed, who would like it that way. Mm -hmm. So the detective, instead of helping a lot of people with something they want to know, is a troublemaker. They, yep. they they are not well they are not welcome by a, a fair number of people in this situation and some of whom don't even really care about the crime it's not that they want this crime covered up they just don't want anybody upsetting what's going on and right they're, they're they're perfectly happy you know that this particular person died in an unjust way because well you know really who cares i it's more important for this thing to get taken care of that i need done um, yeah. So your okay. Before I go into specific types and start going blah 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 and annoying everybody, um, what you're describing to me sounds very name of the rose in partaking of both of those. They're they're not really incredible. I mean ultimately it sort of ends up in the latter if you, i think that right the way that i think of it is that it starts as the first one uh -huh. and then as the time thing goes down it becomes the other one right well this is how i feel the light of there being people there with agendas and issues of their own that actually aren't necessarily about yeah. murder that plays yeah. in. i mean somebody might oppose you from digging further because it's screwing up their yeah. their, their desires um, yes. So, so that that's what, okay, and that means I'm listen. I'm hearing you correctly because the name of the rose is a lot like that. It starts kind of, oh no, this poor monk got killed, 
and then after that it's like okay there's a lot of shit going on here and yeah uh, detect and also in the detective stories it may well be that the crime is never revealed at large that the detective or someone else are the only people who actually truly understand what happened and ending on a downer is is common in detective stories yeah i, I think it's um i think both like i i i think that um the way that i i started is like it's because if you take the agatha christie stuff that i like it's very firmly in the first category of the right. stuff that you said right um i don't think that the game is like actively pushing for one of these two it's just that naturally as if like the first one is like an ideal for you to achieve and if you don't get it It'll end no up. one no, yeah no one no one is going to um gift that ending to you right right, right. if you and want to be her cool poirot be there Right. Yes. Right. right. If you want to be her cue Poirot, you better fucking be her cue Poirot. Right. right? So and the, use your your abilities well and then make the right decisions and then maybe you'll have a her Hercule Poirot story. Right. And then we'll but it's not guaranteed. Right, right. Earn your cozy. Um, yes, earn your cozy. I like I like this. I'm gonna write it down. Earn can I steal it? Earn your cozy. Yeah, I like this. Um Because I, it started from the idea that like you are, it, it's it's on you, right? No, I'm, I'm, we are not guaranteed. This is not Brindlewall's fucking bay where like you're guaranteeing the genre ending, right? I don't give a shit about that. Right. You right. group of people are making this, so, okay, so it's this is making really a lot more sense to me now, and I'm getting where you're coming from pretty well. The only question is, um. How are people doing? You played a little bit, right? You and the other fellow have both played a little bit. Very before. little. I, we're doing the first playtest with a group this Saturday. In that case, yeah. the, I don't have much to say because what pops out experientially is much more important. Um, there is one theoretical thing that we know, you know is the issue, which is simply what is the player relationship to the concept of investigation role? We just don't know what that is yet. Yeah, we've discussed possible outcomes for this, and what I've what I've decided with Lorenzo is that, like, honestly, I have some ideas, but I don't fully know, and it will depend on the people as well. So I, I'm not prescribing anything. Right. And we will need to convene. We literally had a conversation about this yesterday, and we will need to convene after the playtest and kind of discuss how that went, and see you know if there's any additional procedures but even suggest you may i don't know if you recall this but i tend to downplay the word play test these days sure whatever like the play or yeah well but the idea being that it's not as though you're putting something to the test so much as just doing this thing having a good time and then spitballing how you might want to do it differently or refine some of it or you know, right. It's it's less of a it's less of a field test of you know. Like right. Product. Well, testing, that's how, that, right? that's how we mean it in the game video game industry. But then some people don't really understand that. But fair enough. Yeah, I mean the way you said. Right. So with that in mind, then the discovery of just what happens. I mean, it may not even be a matter of you coming up with the proper prescription of how it's supposed to be, and then testing that. You may just do it and then see how it goes and say, well, then that's how it is. 